Hi there. Before we start the video, uh, thank you for watching, first of all. <laughs> Secondly, if you're watching this video, I assume you like role-playing games. I like role-playing games. Uh, I assume you like making money. I like making money. Uh, I wrote a book about how to make money playing role-playing games. It's called Money Master's Guide, Game Mastering for Fun and Profit by Raymond J. Hicks. You can get it uh, at rj.net slash moneymaster, all one word, uh, or on Amazon. Uh, and if you get it out, it very much helps me out. And you know what? It hopefully, we'll have some tips to help you as well uh, and make some money. It helped me pay for some medicine this week. So, uh, you know, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> uh, you will also be able to find ways of using it to help you pay for important things too. So thank you very much for watching the video, whether you go and get the book or not. Uh, I hope you enjoy uh, the next video. Thanks. <laughs> Alrighty, here we go. I got a figure to represent Oren Ryder. This is from Infinity. It's one of the, uh, kind of remember what my group is called, Haki Islam, I think. Uh, but anyway, Oren Ryder, manufacturer, all around just general uh, factory worker, looking to improve his life and, and get somewhere. And this is going to be the chronicles of him in the year 5150. We're going to start in September because that's the month we're in. Pretty straightforward. And um, before we get started on anything, I guess our, our first monthly sort of encounter is going to be an involuntary one. Uh, let's see what's going to happen. Is it 1, 2, 3, 4? It's only 1d6. Oh, we got robbed. <laughs> we literally got robbed to start with. Uh, so, let's have a look. That's page 114. Pretty straightforward. 114. Flip, flip, flip. We'll get there. All right, here we go. 117, 116, 114. Robbery. Attempted robbery. Where did it happen? Let's find out. It's uh, in the apartment complex where we work. We live in Lower Gaia. Uh, uh, lower guy. I'm just going to write all this down because it actually ends up making like a really cool story. Uh, robbed. Let's see what what day of the month, 9th of September. We got a uh, robbed. Let's have a look what happens in a robbery. Oh. We've got the whole, the whole thing over here. It starts over here. Here we go. It actually starts on 113. Lies. The book lies. There you go. The in this encounter, the player has in, been involved in a robbery. This could be either as the victim or the perpetrator to escape being robbed or harm or to rob someone. Uh, I don't think he would rob someone. I think that's not really, like, that's not his jam. So I'm guessing he's getting robbed uh, to start off with. Uh, we will be going alone because we've only got us. Uh, we'll put them on the battle board in a second. Robberies can be involuntary due to uh, or due to a chilling encounter. We'll get to the chilling encounter in a minute. Uh, if day not already determined, robbery will take place during the daytime on a 1 to 2 or a night time on a 3 to 6. So, 3 to 6, it's night time. Coming home from work, getting robbed. Uh, it's not great. Uh, it could be a robbery or a pickpocket. So let's hope for pickpocket because that sounds a bit nicer. Nope, it's definitely an upfront robbery. Um, play continues until a player has accomplished his objective. Who's the robber? Consult a robber, robber, robber table. Uh, is it going to be? Let's just do this. I think who's who's robbing me? We'll use that. Well, obviously it's a criminal element, right? It has to be because they're robbing us. <laughs> one would think. Uh-oh, I dropped the dice and it's gone under the chair. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, there we go. I found it. No, I didn't. All right, let's just roll another dice. <laughs> one and a six is a seven. So it's a, a service Joe. A service Joe is robbing us. Rude. Uh, <laughs> so rude. Uh, and it's a ten. A wait staff. Some waiter has come off their job. How many of them are there? Uh, a 1d3, so that's three. There's one more than me, so two, two, wait, two waiters. And uh, I I think you're meant to take what I rolled before, but I'll, I'll roll again. So we'll go six. So it's going to be, uh, that's their stats. One's a Zeog, and one is basic. All right, I will set up the battle board, and I'll find that dice that went under the thing, and I'll see you there.
Welcome to the sprawling, neo-lit metropolis of New Hope City, the throbbing heart of planet New Hope. In a city teeming with over two million beings from every corner of the galaxy, life moves at a relentless pace. Amidst this hive of activity, our story begins with Oren Ryder, a working class man whose dreams defy the monotony of his surroundings. Oren toils away at Lucent Light Hardware and Manufacturing, a massive factory that churns out all the essential hardware and manufacturing goods that keep New Hope City running. With over 25,000 employees on the factory floor, Lucent Light is a no-nonsense operation where workers are merely cogs in the colossal machine. In this unforgiving environment, injuries on the job are commonplace, and those unfortunate to be hurt often find themselves on the bread queue with a fat severance pay. The relentless pace means that the machines never stop, and the employees are, indeed, just numbers. Oren's life revolves around his work. He lives in Lower Gaia, a district that may not be the worst in town, but it's certainly not far from it. His humble apartment, though dangerous and far from luxurious, is the only one that he can afford. It's a gritty and unforgiving place that mirrors the harsh reality of his daily existence, but it's also conveniently close to the factory where he slaves away. Oren, however, is different from most of his fellow workers. While many resign themselves to their lackluster lives, Oren dares to dream of something beyond the confines and cramped apartment and the endless factory floor. He yearns for a life that doesn't involve sleeping amidst bed bugs and filth and he looks down on all those that are happy to contend with that. He's determined to break free from the cycle of monotony that grips New Hope City's working class. As our story unfolds, Oren's aspirations and the harsh realities of life in New Hope City will collide, setting the stage for a sci-fi roleplay adventure that explores the boundaries of dreams and the price one must pay to chase them in a world where even survival is a daily struggle. As Oren approaches his home, he hears footsteps behind him. Who will it be? Alrighty, so we've got uh, my guy, our two waitresses. This is uh, the apartment building in which I, uh, you know, in which I I, I live. <laughs> and just as uh, Oren Ryder is opening up the gate, the security gate that's meant to keep the criminal element out. Uh, as he's pulling out his keys to do that, hey, hot stuff, put them up. They're going to rob me. Uh, now, the sort of leadery one is not armed, but the other one is. She's got a pistol, P1, same as me. Let's see, do I carry my pistol to work? One to three, I don't. Four, five, six, I do. I do, I have my gun, but it's not handy, right? <laughs> I've got to, you know, don't have it out. I'm currently unlocking a gate. So, uh, to my apartment building. So that is sort of where where we're at, and um, because they are armed, the robbery table says they have the advantage. Let's just go through the list of the robbery, just so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm literally just following through the encounter, uh, as as it says. Right, we did all the cards to determine how many they are, who's the leader, etc. Here we go. Robbery. Place figures on battle board. Check. Big old check. Uh, the robbers have their weapons drawn. If they have any, which she does, so it's pointing at me. Uh, if unarmed, they will uh, be physical melee instead. That's fine. I can choose to surrender. Um, but here I am thinking, you know what? Will I want to surrender? You know, I, I've just had a hard day at work. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to fight back. Uh, you know, two little girls, whatever. Now, the real Ray would not do this. The real RJ does not fight back. If someone was mugging me, I would definitely give them the money. <laughs> That's not true. That's why I have one story. Story time, then we'll continue the game. Uh, you may not believe this story. Many people who I tell don't believe it. It actually happened 100% for real. Uh, I used to live in Macquarie Fields, which is like a bit of a ghetto. Uh, and this was back when it was a bit more of a ghetto than it is now. It's a bit nicer now. And um, I used to work the night shift. I used to work in a service station at the night shift. And one night after coming home from work, it had been a long day. And Mike, I, I'd lost my license because I'd done, I'd been a naughty boy. I was speeding. I was going to uni. So I was work, going to uni during the day and working night shift at night. Uh, and that was what was happening. And so I'd lost my license because I was, I'd, I was late for a group project. And uh, so I, I had to take the bus. And a, so I had to take a bus. I had to wait. 
I did my night shift until 7 a.m. I then had to wait until 8 for the school bus and then catch a bus to the train station and then a train to the local station, Macquarie Fields. And then from there, I walked all the way uh, to my house, which was like maybe three kilometers, right? So I'm, I'm almost at my house. I'm probably like, uh, you know, half a kilometer away from my house. Uh, and there's a skate park on the corner in Macquarie Fields, and there was this kind of sketchy dude, and I'm like, I don't want to, like, you know, cross the road or whatever. It's just us. It's, a, you know, it's 8.30 in the morning, and the sketchy dude is there, and he kind of uh, he says, hey, what's up, what's up, bro? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, hi. <laughs> and I feel like I'm tired, I'm exhausted from work. Much like Owen Ryder here, uh, you know, and he pulled out a knife, and he's like, give us your wallet or you're going to get stabbed, eh? And I'm like, uh, okay, sure. And so I opened, I had like a, a bag, it had Sonic on it. Uh, and I unzipped the back, which is where I kept my wallet when I worked. Uh, but as I put my hands in to get my wallet out, my hand touched the cold, hard metal of uh, the utensils I use to um, eat my dinner with. And my brain at the time was like, hey, man, I've had no sleep. <laughs> Let's try this. I had my other hand on the wallet ready to like chuck it at him if this didn't work. And I pulled, I said, I think I have what you're looking for. And I pulled out my fork. <laughs> and luckily he had a sense of humor and he laughed his ass off. He said, all right, get out of here before I change my mind or I'll stab you. Eight. <laughs> and <laughs> I got away with not getting mugged. I was fully prepared to hand over my wallet or get stabbed, I guess. But my stupid sense of humor got me out of it. Uh, and that is the only time I've ever been a smart ass to a criminal. So there you go. That's that's the only time I fought back to being mugged. And Owen Ryder is going to do that. But instead of having a fork, he has a P1 pistol. So uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> he chooses not to surrender. Consult the attempted robbery table. Um, individual victim and robber start with 2d6. The leader only rolls uh, once and the d6 is applied to all. Now, there is a modifier though. So, 2d6, 2d6 for me. Now, they have their weapon drawn. So, they get an extra d6. Uh, I do not have my weapon drawn, so that does not happen. Um, so, we're going to roll these versus our rep. They have a rep of three. We got that there. Do we need to... I'll bring it up so you can see the cards nice and nice and clear. So we rolled a six. They have a rep of three, both of them. Uh, and obviously the main one is the one with the the, the the pistol. I don't have a Zeog Mini, so we're just going with... Uh, yeah, did I show you these guys? It's a, they're from Horror Clicks. It's a candy striper. And uh, it's like meant to be a vampire chick, but she'll, she'll do as a waitress, I guess, you know. Night City at three in the morning. <laughs> Not Night City, so New Hope City. Getting my, my sci-fi properties confused. Uh, so they need three or less, is how this works. I need five or less. Uh, and we just consult, see how we go. All right. Uh, that's a failure for me. That's a pass for me. That's a failure for them. And this one was a three and a one. So those two are passes. So they passed one more than I did. And the sixes, they are always a failure. So let's have a look. Um, yeah, do I surrender or do I resist? Uh, in this case, they got the more, so the victim resists. Go to the action table. Yeah, yeah, all right, so I definitely resist. There we go, I don't surrender. The action table is on page 44. I'll show you that. There you go. Now, but uh, these guys have the advantage because they have the um, thing out. Oh, my security officer is coming to... Check all things are, un uh, 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 I keep saying all things are untoward. He's checking that things are not untoward, right? He's, he's doing that. You okay, Gohan? You always come out when I'm making a video. Is it because I'm talking to no one? You're like, hey, who's that guy talking to? I better make sure it's no one sus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, sorry about that. All right, action table. Here's how we do it, as they say, as, as Ed says. So, uh, we are going to... They have the advantage. And, um... I don't know what that means. <laughs> Consult the action table, page 44, uh, which we're on. Roll 1d6 to see who has the advantage. We know they have the advantage. 
Uh, modify the rep of each leader by any applicable attribute. They do not have any attributes. Each leader rolls now the modified number of d6 versus their modified rep. Um, so in this case, it's two for both of us. Uh, I don't have any fancy, fancy rep, uh, you know, changes. Uh, I don't think I do anyway. After the active side has finished all of its actions, oh, it's to see who is active, which side is active. Uh, and that is uh, determine which side is active and what each character can do. Okay, well, let's just roll the dice and see what we've got. I have passed two. They have passed one. So, uh, D6 passed more. So, is it the same or more? I passed more, so I get to actually act first. Now, I don't, um, I don't have my weapon out, so I'm going to have to get that out uh, and, and do some shooting and things like that. After the active side has finished all its action, both sides take a will to fight test. After the will fight test is taken, the figures l have left the board. Uh, then inactive side becomes active and carry out its actions. After newly active side has finished all of its actions, both sides take a will fight to fight. Test, repeat the process until only one or no sides remain on the battle board. Yes, both sides could leave the battle board at the same time. Uh, note that if you follow the same basic sequence, if you use the tabletop rules. Okay, yeah, cool. So, we do that. So, um, all right, well, I guess I am the one that's going first. I'm the active player and I'm going to shoot because that's an option that I can do. So, shooting. Uh, I get out my P1 pistol. It only has one shot. Um, so that's, that's what it does. And, um, we'll, we'll take a crack at them, I guess. Uh, I can only choose one target though. And I'm going to choose the, the person with the, with the gun pointing at my head, <laughs> which I think that makes sense. Uh, do they have cover? No, they do not. Uh, targeting can you shoot. I'm active, uh, when directed to return fire on the shooting table, or if I'm being charged, but the other character is active. Blah, blah, blah. How to shoot. When firing with a weapon, uh, it's more than one shot. You declare how many targets you have. Well, I only have one shot. I declared her. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Consult the shooting table. Okay, so I have to roll two dice versus my rep. My rep is five. Two passes. Yay. Uh, I don't have any fancy things that modify it. I hit all targets. That is pretty good. Go to the shooting damage table. Uh, the shooter rolls 1d6 for each uh, hit scored. Modify by any things. They don't have hard as nails or resilient because they're just normal. Uh, and final scores are always applied high to low. Uh, resolve all hits versus taking the shooters the same target at the same time. All right. Now, I, I only have one hit so because I only have one bullet. Otherwise, we'd roll more than one dice. So here we go. Uh, okay. I got a two. It is taken versus the rep of the target. So that is actually lower than the rep of the target. So, uh, they, a six is obviously dead. Higher rep than rep, but not a six is out of the fight, but that's okay. We, we're not that. If it's the same as their rep, they go out of the fight. But if it's lower than their rep, which it is, she ducks back. So she's going to duck back and take some cover. Uh, behind behind here, and she's meant to face the other way or whatever. But we know she's ducking back, okay? Uh, and we'll we'll have we'll have this lady duck back as well, um, just because that is the thing uh, that they do. All right, now they take a will to fight test. Apparently, uh, where is the will to fight? All right, so they need to take two d six versus the um, leader's rep. So we're looking for less than three. How many pass? They both pass, two pass. Um, if more than 50% are out of the fire, obviously did dead or left the battle board, count as passing only 1d6. Otherwise, carry on. So they're, they're quite chuffed to keep fighting with me. Oh, they now have a chance to shoot back. They become the active side. Uh, so she's going to... Well, well, we'll see what action she can take. Uh, how many of her rep does she get? Both of them have passed, so she can do what she wants. Uh, and she can't shoot because she's in uh, duck back, right? So she has to recover from duck back first. So let's count her as recovered from duck back first. Uh, and then that's her turn. This one could charge me, but I don't think... I think she's going to want her friend to do the damage, uh, you know, because she's, you know, unarmed. If she charges, then I get to shoot at her. 
So I think, you know, the smart move is not get shot, right? I think it doesn't matter what you're doing. Uh, and then we, we are now at the next turn, I guess. Let's, uh, let's all roll a will to fight check. Uh, I pass two, they pass two, so we both carry on. Happy days. Uh, and then we roll a d3 to see who's active now. Uh, who has the advantage now? Is that what we do? After the newly active side is finished, uh, both sides will take a wood fight test. Repeat the process until only one or no side is in. Okay, so we don't need to worry about who has advantage. Here we go. Uh, we're both just going to do our reps and see what actions we get. I have two passed. They have one passed again. So same situation as last time. That advantage. Uh, I'm going to shoot again. Uh, let's give that a go. And um, same as last time. All right, I've got two passes. Um, pretty straightforward. I am uh, I am cruel as well, so I guess that would make sense. Yeah, I'm just going to press my advantage. Uh, hits versus her rep is going to be uh, three or less. Okay, she passed her rep. It's the same as rep. Hang on, it's different this time. Uh, so she is going to... If it is the same as rep, she goes out of the fight. So she's like, nah, man, I've just taken two shots... Uh, I'm going to bail. <laughs> or is she damaged? Now, out of the fight is... Um, if carry take damage, they fall to the ground. Active character charges out of the fight character. They can choose to automatically dispatch or capture it. So we could capture her. <laughs> character reaches zero rep. The same is going out of the fight. All right, so she's out of the fight. We've shot her. She's out. Um, let's do a will the fight check for her friend. Uh, here we go. And she's like, two have failed. I'm guessing that's going to be like, see you later, losers. Uh, <laughs> I know that's what I would do. Uh, zero passed. Then she leaves the board. There you go. The whole side leaves the board. She leaves a friend there. Uh, has a cop been called? <laughs> is the other thing we have to worry about. Um, and I... Don't know how to do that. Hang on. <laughs> so yeah, so you can see there you go. It's a pretty simple system. There's a lot of back and forth. There is reactions that can happen with the nut. It's very similar to the nut system. They, you know, they can, um, you know, react and sometimes they shoot back or, or whatever. It's like a back and forth. Um, it's a bit more simplified, I think, for this system because it's a bit bigger. I'm just seeing if uh, the, the cops are called because, you know, the, and I do like this idea of like, you know, you guys are shooting in the streets. Of course someone's going to call the cops. Are they going to get here first or not? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that makes sense. That just makes sense. 82. Our police are called. All right. There we go. 82. Don't worry. We'll get the hang of this. Just like all the rule systems. This is my problem. I keep jumping rule system to rule system. Though, that is because, um, you know, as, as we've said, I have other things that are, are going on. Where is it? 82. Alright, police are called. Are they called? Yes or no? When characters are ready to roll activation after shots have been fired, roll 1d6 and subtract from the law level of the area. So we said we're in Lower Gaia and our law level of Lower Gaia is not on that page. <laughs> it's on this one. Lower Gaia is uh, law level... Which one's the low level? Low level inside... Well, low level is number from 1 to 5 uh, and reflects how much police are on planet, how dangerous. Uh, for detailed low level, a new health planetary low level of 2. All areas on the planet, uh, especially uh, New Hope City, can vary. Does it tell me which one's the low level? <laughs> Doesn't tell me which one. Like, I know it, it's there. It makes sense the way it is there, but I just don't know, um, you know, which of those numbers is the law level. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, decide the range, usually home, 2d6. I don't know. I'm guessing it's either two or three. So we have to roll less than two or three. Here we go. All right. If it's higher than that. Oh, okay. Subtract the score. So we rolled a six. We're going to subtract. We'll subtract two. They said every area is two. Uh, that's how many turns before the cops arrive. No earlier than the next turn of activation. Uh, when they arrive, place them on the battle board between the opposing bands. 
uh, and then they roll for their activation. So, uh, well, we've got two turns, of course. I'm going to go inside and uh, wash the blood off me. Do I loot her? Uh, loot the corpse. I'm guessing we get a bonus D6 or something like that. I will look into these rules off camera and I'll get back to you. Alrighty, I found the table. <laughs> okay, so it's page 18 for future efforts. Alright, so, uh, you know, if we have, uh, you know, damage each opponent that you cause to go out of the fight, obviously dead or captured, you get one increasing rep D6 or XP, you know, as, as I was saying, right? Like... <laughs> Um, so when good things happen, otherwise, generally it's, you know, um, so that's good. We, we did okay and we didn't, we didn't get injured. So we're, we're happy. And the decreasing, as you can see, the decreasing is a much longer list. <laughs> right? We didn't have to use star power. We didn't have to use sweet talk. Uh, you know, we didn't have to do any of these things. We're okay. Um, for this fight. So there we go. That's our, whoops, that is our. We got a plus one rep D six, which I'm going to write in my little write in my little book. Um, so we're going to go plus one. <laughs> so going go up and down. It's kind of like uh, counting cards, right? Plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, zero, zero, zero. Right? Uh, there we go. All right. So we successfully resolved that encounter. Um, happy days. That is our first, I guess, involuntary encounter. Uh, in the next video, we will have our first voluntary one where we're going to go and do a bit of chilling. I think, um, been chilling, right? Yeah, yeah. I have no idea what that meme is. <laughs> oh, no, it's got John Cena in it. That's all I know. Some kind of Chinese ice cream thing. Uh, yeah, I think, look, you know, he's not happy about, Oren Ryder's not happy that, you know, he lives in this crappy part of town. He wants to move up in the world. And so maybe he's going to go find some friends uh, to, you know, work work that out and find a way, some kind of way to, to get himself out of living in this crime alley. <laughs> we'll see you in the next video.